Oh my! Wow! This set up across the table sewing machine. Judy, this has always been my ideal way. I don't really know if you guys appreciate this as much as I do, but my heart is so happy. And so with great pleasure, I am here to announce it is time for our annual prom slash fancy time video. I know a very small chunk of you are actually interested or going to prom, but I know there's a much bigger group of you, myself included, that just uh, likes fancy things. We have done fancy accessories, fancy Netflix inspired looks. I really like doing this at this time of year, so tune in next year, same time roughly. A lot of this 3D floating sculptural stuff like Cardi B at the Grammys, Thames at the Oscars, and then sculptural in the chest area too. Lily James, Jessica Chastain, you guys see what I'm talking about? Jennifer Connelly, it's like literally like a encrusted trapezoid or just very simply a round shape like Ruth Carter, Quinta Brunson, Denai Gurira. You get the idea here. And then the other thing that just like sparks joy for me are these Prada trains. We have Amanda Seyfried, I never know how to say her last name, and Hong Chao. So here are some of the ideas visualized and there's a part of me that's like, let's make them all. But I am getting better at knowing myself and what's realistic and I am leaving on a trip soon. So I just need to pick one of these. This is the fabric. Went with the hot pink because it's kind of Prada, it's kind of Valentino, it's kind of Barbie, and all of these things are floating in the ether right now. With projects like this where there's a lot of inspiration, problem solving, supplies, and multiple pieces coming together, you start wishing for a digital tool that can organize and visualize it all. So I'm so excited to be partnering with Milanote to show you all how easily you can collect notes, reference images, plan tasks, and more all in one place. The board that I've been showing you guys is our project. It helps me so much with visualizing colors, shapes, textures, and seeing if they all make sense together. I especially enjoy the ability to move items around freely. I can resize them and that helps me emphasize and anchor different ideas as they solidify. Once you start using Milanote, you can start with a blank project, but Milanote also makes starting even easier with a hundred built-in templates suitable for designers, photographers, illustrators, or just like people who pray to make things look nice like myself. All of the ideas and the work here can be shared with team members within minutes and you can access Milanote via desktop or through their app, for example, like when you're in the fabric store looking for fabric. Milanote is my favorite tool to use, especially when it's a big project with lots of visuals. Like we haven't even gotten into like the final styling, hair, makeup, setting, photo shoot, theme, any of that. But all of those pieces, the inspo, the reference images, the to-dos, they can all be added to this one project so they're all in one place. Best of all, Milanote is available for free and there's no time limit. Sign up using the link in the description and start your next creative project while I try to finish this one. I was trying to find something in my letter low kit that already had a side dart built in because that just makes my life easier. And I found this little vintage number. I noticed the jacket had a side dart in it, which led me to believe that the inner blouse would also have a side dart. And I was right. Here is the front half with a side dart. Here's the back half. So these two I'm going to draw out on a piece of paper. If you look closely, you can see that I'm folding the parts of the pattern that I don't need out of the way. This is just something I do so that if I still want to use this pattern for something else in the future, it's completely intact. And now I just gotta take these darts, one on the side for the chest, one in the back for a little bit of a waist, and transfer them onto the patterns. This is one of the backs, ooh, that is pink. And this is one of the fronts with those side darts. They've been pressed pointing down. It's looking spacious. I feel like some of this is gonna get taken away. I'm just gonna sew the shell together on the side seams, see where we land for sizing. This top piece is like, is way too wide. I have like a whole extra bit here tucked in. And then the back, oh boy, so much excess fabric is hanging out, so this needs to be taken in. The side seam though, it's landing in roughly the right place, so really, all the fabric that needs to go is in the back. 
I took in an extra one centimeter on the side seams. This first line is the original dart that Letterlow gave me. Then I took in two centimeters and then we went in another two centimeters. So I'm gonna copy all of those adjustments onto the shell. I've been procrastinating because the next couple of steps, oops, I should close the door. The next couple of steps is always where so many things come in at once. I'm attaching the shell to the lining, which is the opportunity to insert the straps. I have a new assistant by the way, Leticia. She's the one who put together this lovely strap as well as also helping me sew a lot of other things. For those of you that have questions about my assistant, Julia, I will address that in a second. Once the shell is attached to the lining, the zipper also comes into play as well. This is when I'll be adding pockets. So like, I honestly have no idea how big pockets are supposed to be. So I just copied this from a pair of pants that I own because then at least I have an idea how it's gonna turn out. And I have them stitched right sides together with a finishing stitch so there's no fraying on the inside. To be honest, I um, almost deleted pockets from the steps in this video. Uh, I know there's a universal rule that like every dress is made better with pockets. However, I will say in the photos that Amanda took in this dress, the ones where she puts her hands in the pockets, I feel like really undersell the dress. And when it comes to pockets, that's like inevitably what happens. Your body just wants to be like all nice and comfy. So part of me was like, just cut them. You're not gonna ever pose with your hands in the pockets. But then I remembered that like, I'm a mom now and it's pretty common for me to have like a facial tissue or like a little wipe just hanging out in a pocket, so we proceed. Okay, I'm so scared. I'm gonna sew the shell to the lining, pinning everything right sides together along the entire top edge from armpit to top, across, armpit, across the back. And I'm gonna sew it together with a strip stitch. It's a little like an apron right now, but time for the zipper. And then I'm also gonna bring the straps in to these two gaps. This is what an understitch and a press will achieve. It's just so much cleaner now. The understitch means that you don't see anything out here on the front. When you flip it over, you can see the tiny little stitch that is helping it all to lay flat. It's time for the zipper. The zipper with lining is a little bit of a inside out dance. I'm gonna put a link in the description for a more detailed tutorial because I feel like that is like a whole little in of itself. The zipper's on and she's lined. I'm proud of this one. If there's one thing I hope anyone takes away from watching my YouTube channel over the years is the growth that happens when you just like keep going at the same hobby or skill set or whatever, project after project after project. Some of you have been subscribed from the very beginning and you know that originally my videos were all about like a really crisp, clean, clear educational tutorial. I never officially addressed why things shifted away from that, but it was actually because the imposter syndrome of it all was like eating me alive. Being someone who at the time had not gone to fashion school, never received any formal training, owned just such a beginner friendly sewing machine, I slowly felt like I had no authority to be teaching people how to sew because the little mistakes or ways I was doing things differently stood out to me a lot. Over the years, it's become a lot more of a sewing adventure type of video, so that way I feel at least completely transparent about my skill level. But now, weirdly, it's come full circle and I actually start to feel moments where I'm like, dang, I'm getting good at this. Of course, there's still a lot to learn. For a few things, I've done them enough times. So actually, you're gonna start to see me and my assistant, Leticia, are going backwards through all my videos and trying to create updated blog posts that are much more detailed, actually educational. I'm gonna put in links to all of the videos that I like to watch whenever I want to refresh on a concept. For a long time, I've been feeling like I've been neglecting the group of you that actually really want to improve your sewing skills, so I'm coming for you. That's Leticia's first big project, getting the blog in a shape where you can go there to actually see every detailed step and get a sense of how something came together. Which brings me to announce that like this was something very sad for both me 
and Julia, but she's got a full-time gig, she's working on her career, and so it just no longer matches up for her to be my assistant. I'll put a link in the description if you want to follow Julia, if you want to send her some love for all the amazing hard work she did with me over the last three years. Time has gone by so quickly. I need to do pockets. open the sides to fit in the pockets. Also, I found a link online on how to close this bottom edge with the lining and that also involves a hole in the side. So let's do pockets first. I'm working on these back bows. I have four long strips that I need to cut out. They're getting paired up and sewn right sides together to make the long section of the bow. These were wide enough and slippery enough to flip over a meter stick, which is always nice. Definitely looks so much better once it's pressed. I'm at the point where I see the light at the end of the tunnel, but then part of me always gets scared to have that feeling because I have been burned by you before. I'm trying to figure out a way to lock it into the folded position. I'm gonna try this bar tack feature on my Bernina. I'm just gonna press this and see what happens. Ooh! I feel like I want to move on to the train and give that a start. It is just two giant rectangles. I'm gonna sew them right sides together so that they look beautiful inside and outside. So we're aiming to have the train cross over the strap point just by a little bit. That leaves me needing to cut off this whole side here. It looks weirdly narrow, but I guess that's right. So in the inner lining, I have seam ripped a hole. Reaching through that hole, I pull out the shell. I flip the lining as well. Right sides together, I just sew with a straight stitch as far as I can go. I think I have pulled it all right side out, completely closed all the way around the bottom, a gaping hole in the inner side. I'm gonna understitch, seal off this hole, and then that just leaves me with the train. It's so cute. Leticia has helped me hand stitch the little bows in place, leaving this top little lip, which is gonna be the lip we use to attach it to the dress. I'm like literally at the last step and I'm like the most nervous I have been throughout this whole project. Okay, also, look at that clean bottom. I did that, I did that. It was my first time and I did that. The pockets look so good after press. There's no longer like that weird feeling of looking at a gaping opening. And now I just slap this baby on here. 